Last time on the Every Corner Tour we visited. Esch sur Sur, Rambourg, Bouled, Lac de la Haute Sur, Wiltz, Kishpelt, and Gerstorf. And now the journey continues with episode 3 of the Every Corner Tour. So oh, it's day five. We are now in Vinzla, a little northern commune, a little village. Yes, that's right. This new leg of our trip starts with yet another peaceful commune here in the north, Vinzla. Next to the town hall here, you'll find the charming Baurigat home to a variety of plants and flowers that the commune is working to safeguard. And if there's someone who's enjoying the greenery, it's certainly our special guest of the day. There's going to be a lot of walking and a lot of discovering, so we decided to take Sira. Sira is already discovering something, apparently. So after this express morning visit, time for a new commune. Yeah! Vincrange is quite simply the largest commune in the country by area. Covering over 100 square kilometers, it counts no less than 27 villages and 21 churches. We're in the village of Oberwampach. We are now in the church of Oberwampach, and as you can see, there's some very nice frescoes back here, very different from a lot of the other churches. In And after Oberwampach, the village of Vincange itself, which although neither the largest nor the most significant in the area, serves as the commune's administrative centre. So we're basically in the middle of a field, and this is where the commune of Vincange has decided to put their town hall. Our next stop here is the little village of Boxhorn, where we're joined by local resident Lara, who's taking us to a unique site in the forest. <laughs> 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 no, Sarah, that's not the site. Around here you will see over 50 windmills from far away. Over there are the windmills in Weiler. They are the most powerful in Luxembourg. Indeed, Vincange seems to be a resolutely green commune where wind energy, nature and agriculture form a pleasant landscape. And there's even a fruity reason to come here. Foxhorn is known for its blackberries, so in the past people came to collect blackberries. And after this little forest walk, we make it to the Boxhorn Plain Memorial. In 1945, three Belgians and three British came back from a special mission, but the Americans thought that they were Germans and accidentally they shot them down. So the airplane fell down here and only the pilot managed to get out and all the other six died here. Yes, World War II has left its mark on Vincange too, and our next site is another example of that. We're on our way to Saint-Fontaine now. Charles, what are we going to see in Saint-Fontaine? <laughs> I love asking you these <laughs> questions because you never know the answer. <laughs> no. You do not know where we're going, Charles. Here behind us at the Abbey of Saint Fontaine was a concentration camp during the Second World War. Jewish people that were old and sick had to stay there to be later deported to the East, their death camps. And as we take in this reminder of a dark historical period, we set off for another commune. Trois Vierges is the northernmost commune in the country. Its unique location in the heights of the Ardennes means it's not lacking in scenic views either. We are in the place for three virgins. Yes, Trois Vierges takes its name from the three virgins that the town's inhabitants used to worship. Today, the figures can be seen in the large Franciscan church, which stands out due to its rich and baroque style. The commune is also home to the Kneif, the highest point in the country. And needless to say, we almost missed it. We are at the highest 
pigeon shit in Luxembourg. This? That's a joke. Like, look, it's telling you a joke. Why is this now the highest point? They made one huge statue on the first point, and then they found out that the first point was wrong. Then they made another huge statue on the second point, and then when they finally found out, they didn't want to take the risk. Ah oh yes, trial and error gets you there in the end. Or does it really? I am standing on the summit of the uphill, which is higher than that point, which is claimed to be the highest point in Luxembourg. Well, for a high point, it's certainly a bit of a low. Never mind, let's head onwards. Clairvaux is one of the more populous towns in the north. Along with the large commune that surrounds it, it has plenty to offer on a cultural and historical level. After a lunch enjoyed in the welcoming streets of the old town, we head up to the castle. What is inside, Charles? The UNESCO Heritage Site, Family of Man, which is one of three in the country. The Family of Man is a world-renowned photo exhibition curated by Luxembourg native Edward Steichen. Through a collection of over 500 pictures from all across the world, it attempts to answer the ambitious question of what humanity really is. Clairvaux isn't just an inspiring exhibition though, it's also high tech. This sign, it's so brilliant. Oh yeah. Wow. Another sight worth seeing here is the large Benedictine Abbey just above the town. We'll be back here a bit later, but for now it's time to move on. Weissbampach is another commune at the far north of the country. Its strategic position at crossroads between Belgium and Germany means that along with its natural assets, it's also developed much commercial activity. And the main site here are the Weissbampach Lakes, a popular recreation and relaxation area. It is actually natural. a man-made lake. Very relaxing, soothing place. But in Weissbampa, you can also take part in more unexpected activities. So in the winter, you can do some skiing here. Skiing? Um, but there are no slopes. What kind of ski would that be? That would be... Um, flat skiing. <laughs> flat skiing. Cross-country Cross -country skiing, that's Cross right. Unfortunately, the last few years, there's not been enough snow here. Hashtag climate change. <laughs> Hashtag climate change. But and as we melancholically hope for snow this winter, we return to the commune of Clairvaux, where we will spend the night. Hobbitshire is a tourist centre offering activities for all ages and an expansive natural environment. Good food and affordable accommodation are also part of the picture. A schnitzel, chèvre chaud, hot dog cheese, well, complication shop. Another Luxembourgish classic. Yeah. And we finish the day with a nighttime view of the local Saint Hubert church, as the bells ring us off to sleep. <laughs> Here in Robertshire, starting off day six, and we are here seeing the wonderful little animals. Every animal that we saw today was very cute. And although we'd love to spend all day here, it's time to head somewhere new. Horsingen is a large commune covered mainly by expansive areas of forest. Commune number 20, Park Horsingen. No, it's called Horsingen. The actual commune is called Park Horsingen. Yeah. For once, you actually give the answer and you're so confident about it. No, and it's sure. wrong! So while Charles revises his Luxembourgish geography, we take a walk through the beautiful forest here. But aside from the lovely nature, Parkhausingen is also a lively and active commune. In this area, there's some different sport activities that you can do. There's a swimming pool. Next to the swimming pool, you have the triple pitch. On that side, we have a gym. You can probably also run around here, do some horse riding around here. You wish you were here longer so you could do all these sports, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I actually do. I love sports. I love doing exercising. 
It is one of my favourite things to do. And although Julian won't be able to try out all his favourite sports today, he can dry his tears as we take our bus to the next stop. Putscheid is a commune with unique geographical features. Split between the Ur Valley and the Plateau, the contrasting landscapes are picturesque. This is Putscheid. It's, a, it's quite a special commune because there is a height difference of almost 300 metres between the two parts of the commune. And so we take the walk down these 300 metres towards the village of Stolzenburg. So we're currently at the mine. At the mine. Which one? It's um, this one over there. The copper veins of the Klangbach attracted prospectors for many years, despite the mine's location far from any industrial area, and were an important part of Stolzenburg's history. Today, the mine has been converted to a museum, but is unfortunately closed at the moment. This is the closest we're able to get to the mine at the moment. It's very cold. You feel the drift of air coming out from the mine and hitting you. It's incredible. And with that refreshing boost, we make it down to the village. Yay! In Stolzenburg, you'll notably see a lovely little castle looking over the village and a view across the river to our neighbours in Germany. Right over there! Right over there! The area is also home to the Urdal Promenade, a charming walking path along the Ur River. But we're on a tight schedule, so we're getting the bus. Oh! Yeah! Vianden is among the most well-known cities in the country. With its instantly recognisable castle, the inviting and warm town at the heart of the Ur Valley offers a variety of historical and cultural sites. Before we get exploring, we grab a quick lunch at the town's old cinema, now a charismatic cafe and cultural centre. So, we are on the chairlift in Vianden, going up to the very top. Yay! Yes, this chairlift is the only one in the country and offers incredible views as you soar up to the heights of Vianden. And now we're only a short walk away from the most famous site in town. We are at the prestigious Vianden Castle. The Vianden Castle is among the major architectural jewels in Europe and a real tourist magnet. A very impressive monument built between the 11th and 14th centuries, and today fully restored to its former glory, it was historically home to the Counts of Vianden. Do you want some soup? Our tour of the castle completes, we make our way back down to town. Another particularity here in Vianden is this man, who I think you may recognize, Victor Hugo, the famous French author. And he actually spent some time here in Vianden, hence why there is a little museum about him here. A hotel that has his name, a restaurant that has his name, a very prominent figure here in the city. And on that literary note, it's time to shut off for the night. If Charles can actually make his bed, that is. <sighs> Come on, you <laughs> One more corner. Almost there. Have <laughs> you seen how it looks? It's there. <laughs> After six days, we've already visited 22 communes and many more are waiting. So until next time, stay safe and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next episode.